Hello, Gemini, with another general reading for the sign of Gemini. Um, my dear friends, my precious friends, I welcome you into this space just as you are in this moment. I'm glad you're here, and I'm looking forward to connecting in with the energy um, that Spirit um, connects us in with, provides to us today. Um, to get started, um, for this group of Gemini people, for this group that I'm connecting in with today, knowing that not all Geminis are in the same place, we're all different ages, we're all going through different kinds of experiences. We all have completely different natal charts and we are not all in the same place. So um, just want to remind, uh, remind you that not all the readings are meant for the same group of people. All right. That said, um, let's go ahead and look at what the current energy is, what the current energy is. For this group of Gemini people, what is the current energy for this group of Gemini people, please? It's a current energy. It's kind of a feisty energy. It's a feistiness that I feel with this group. Six of Cups energy. What is the current energy? What is the current energy for this group of Gemini people? What is the current energy here? All right, what is the incoming energy that Gemini will be stepping into? What is the incoming future that Gemini will be stepping into? Whoa, geez. What is the incoming future that Gemini will be stepping into, please? What is the incoming future that Gemini will be stepping into? What is the incoming future that Gemini will be stepping into? Guidance, please, for Gemini. What is the guidance, please, for Gemini? What is the guidance, please, for Gemini? What is the guidance, please, for Gemini? Gemini. <laughs> okay, it's four minutes, 11 seconds, and I'm ready to begin. Um, I'm looking at the next, so the current energy I'm looking at is what's happening now. It's what's happening now for this group of Gemini. So this will help you um, to kind of discern or determine if this is some, if this reading is going to be something that's going to be helpful to you um, or not. So but for the future, I'm looking at the next next incoming future. If that's seven to ten days, or if that's a couple of weeks or three weeks, everybody moves at different speeds, and everyone's going through different depths of experiences. Some can be swam through a little quicker. Some you have to slog through. You know, you have to, you know, there could be mud in your trench that you have to kind of pull your feet out of. So um, we're all moving at different speeds. And so there needs to be some, because I feel a feistiness in this energy, a fast moving, a desire to move fast, a fast moving energy here 
Um, but there's also, and, and as I say that, I get, it's like somebody's pulling back on my hand. So there's a desire to move fast, but there is a need to take some time here. So what's, what's happening is you have this soul connection here. There's a soul connection here. Something that's pulling, pulling on your soul, pulling on your heart. It has, you know, when they say when like a father has a baby daughter, the daughter has, what's the saying? Has her fingers wrapped around his thumb. There's a saying. And sometimes when I'm channeling, it's hard. Sometimes <laughs> got him wrapped around her thumb. What is a saying? Put it in the comments. <laughs> I know you will. <laughs> You know what I mean? There's something here that's got your heartstrings. Something's pulling at you, whether it's your homeland, whether it's another person, um, whether it's family, whether it's a soul journey that, you, that you're heading on or that you're wanting to go on or a life path change. There's something pulling at you. I feel like it's a wish come true that is at odds with formality of society. There's something here that is at odds with society and family. And uh, it's something that's at odds. It's something that's at odds with a structure, a structure of society, a structure within a workplace, a structure within a family. There's some sort of wish that is on the horizon here. Okay. It's a dream. It's a wish that's on the horizon as we move this to the upright. Whew. Can you feel that difference in the energy? So you're about to pull it in. You're about to pull this dream in for yourself. What, whatever this is, it's about to come in. Whoo. I can feel it. Can you feel, I'm going to do that one more time because I think it helps to clear, clear the energy just a little bit. Um, there's a dream coming true, some something that you've been working towards or that you've been digging deep about um, that is coming true currently or in the very near future. It's it's coming true. So I'm going to turn it one more time and put it to the upright and I'm going to leave it there just because I think it's stronger in this position. But something is in the process of coming true, in the process of manifesting, in the process of becoming a, a reality. You could be working on a new job. Um, you could be creating a new business. You could be starting a new hobby. You could be pregnant. Um, there's something here. There could be a relationship that's beginning. It's something that pulls at your heart. It's something that has its tentacles within you and is, is some, a part of you, a part of your DNA, a part of your soul, a part of who you are, um, a legacy, a family, um, a lover. Something has its deep grips on you, and it's something that brings you a sense of nostalgia, a sense of love and of healing. It's a beautiful energy, but it's at odds with something. It's at odds with something here. This higher font energy. Formality, formality of societal structure, formality of a belief system, of a religious system. And this higher font energy that's like this came in like this at, at odds with the dream coming true. It's over the top of the hangman. <laughs> so there is some sort of belief system that's changing, a contract that could be changing, an agreement between people that could be changing. Something is changing here because in this process, you have seen something from a different viewpoint or something is requiring to be seen from a different kind of viewpoint. And it has caused some sort of delay or a need for a different kind of understanding or a higher perspective or the dropping of an illusion. And when I say the word illusion back in the day, before I began uh, my freedom path, I always felt when people said illusion that it meant something bad, like I was in an illusion, that I was thinking that life was better than it was or that I was better than I, you know, it, this is not what I mean. 
I mean there is an illusion here of weakness when you are quite powerful as an individual. There could be an illusion here of um, somebody having more strength than you or more empowerment than you or more knowledge than you because you are a powerful soul. And within your subconscious and within your soul, you have a vast amount of wisdom. You have a pricelessness. You are priceless. You are all precious. Because this hangman is next to the seven of swords. So there has been some sort of betrayal here or some sort of theft, theft of energy, theft of your flame that burns within you, theft of an identity, theft of your own individual thoughts and the power of the individual, theft of something. And so there has been, um, or there currently is happening, a, um, a further understanding of what this theft has been and what it has done to you and how you're going to revise whatever this is. You are bringing this dream in. You're bringing this new life in or this new relationship in or this new goal to completion because of some sort of restructuring of how you consider yourself fitting in with society or within a family or within a workplace or within a community. Do you see the difference between these two energies and these two energies. And then we put the higher font, the faith card, the society card over the top. <laughs> and remember how this dream coming true is this way. And this was this way. So there is some currently some kind of restructuring here of your internal belief system. And as you restructure it, and revise it and find a way that fits your own soul um, with a pattern or a perspective um, or a pr positioning um, that provides um, strength to you and guidance and a kind of energy that fits with you, this dream of yours is coming into reality. That's what I feel this is signifying. Now, this is only for the next short period of time. So we could be talking about the bigger story here, the bigger picture, um, because I am Aqua. And I do have, even though with all the faults of the Aqua people, just like the faults of the Gemini, we, we have the, the, the air people are, um, have some, uh, talents that, um, can, can sometimes get us into hot water. Can they not? <laughs> um, one of the things that we can do, is, is I can, I can see the bigger picture, but, um, for some of you, this could be a smaller situation. Perhaps, um, there's something going on at work that you've been able to change that's been helpful for you, or you're in the process of changing it, or maybe there's something within the family that you're in the process of finding clarity on and making changes, but there's definitely something that you're revising here, currently revising. And in the revising, there is a dream that's coming to completion for you or a milestone that is being accomplished or some kind of project that's being finished. And it's something that you feel very warm hearted about, very inspired by, and it's something that really um, has you um, feeling quite fulfilled. Um, there, there has been some difficulty here with this revision. Like it has perhaps um, hurt you in some way, but ultimately sometimes we change our perspectives or we find the truth in something. Um, the truth can hurt just a bit, but the truth can also um, bring in um, victory for us. So there is some sort of revision here, which is helping you to reach some sort of milestone or accomplish some sort of goal that you've been working on. So let's see what is coming up here in the future for you.
We have the Nine of Wands, the Tower, the High Priestess, the Hermit Energy, Page of Swords, Four of Swords, The World, The Empress, Sorry, I have to get them so that they energetically fit for me. That feels better. Okay. As you move forward in the next few weeks or into the situation that you have at, at hand, um, you are worried about some kind of catastrophe. You are worried about some kind of falling out. And I think that you're pretty observant as you move forward. I think this is just a worry. I don't think that because we have the Four of Swords over the top of the tower, I think that it's um, maybe anxiety or um, just worry. Worry can be very stressful to be worried uh, because you're definitely taking an action here. You're definitely stepping forward and, and doing something in the current period of time that's changing your trajectory into the future. Um, with the Nine of Cups, this is making a, making decisions. Um, you're currently in the current time picking period making some decisions, Gemini, um, in order to bring in emotional fulfillment and happiness for yourself. And sometimes when we do that, um, we take the energy that we have been giving other people and we flip it and we turn it towards ourselves. And when we do that, when we turn our energies into our own happiness, um, the people that we have been giving our energy to sometimes do not like to have the source of energy changed. They don't like that, um, whether it's an energetic source of energy or it's something you've been doing at work that you're now going to stop doing or something that you're doing within the family that you're going to stop doing. Um, you're going to start focusing now more on yourself in some way, in a way that brings you happiness, in a way that makes things more um, fulfilling for yourself. Um, and I think that you're wary in the future that some kind of reprisal or consequence is going to be at, at stake here or that could that it could be looming um, but I, I see that you're quite watchful about this you might be really guarding yourself watching um, watching your watching your workplace or watching your family or watching the situation um, you're quite defensive you're, you're standing guard <laughs> um, you're standing guard is how I feel you're standing guard on this decision or these changes that you've made but I think as time passes here, um, I think that it's going to be okay because it looks like you're, co you're coming in and, and being able to rest and relax. So um, I just w what I'm feeling is if there are some changes that are going to occur because you have made some decisions to bring in health and happiness to your own soul, then let those fall where they may, because um, there comes a time when we must learn how to steer our own strength, steer our own energy um, in a way that is promising and enchanting and beautiful for ourselves. Um, we must also feed ourselves as we feed others. So if there is some reprisal here, um, let it fall where it may, because I, I don't see that there's any other choice here for you to reach this beautiful ending, because there is a beautiful ending here for you. 
a beautiful new beginning here for you. So it looks like you're able to move in out of this fear and, and find some relaxation, find some quiet. You might do some praying, connecting in with your divine um, energy, connecting in with um, source energy, connecting in with your subconscious, with your inner selves, with your guides, with your angels, um, and, and asking them for assistance, um, connecting in and finding a calm, finding the peace that is found when we connect in with that with that kind of energy. And I think when we connect in with that kind of energy, we 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 can we are able to detach a little bit um, from the egoic fears and the earthly concerns that we have. So I see this four of swords underneath the tower and it and it really brings a sense of calm and a sense of peace. And if there's anything I can say for the future is to relax my beautiful friends, relax um, it looks like it will be okay. It really looks like it will be okay. The fact that we have you resting in a calm repose coming in out of the battle, um, with, with, the uh, with the sphere of the tower that is around you, I, I feel like you're going to be able to find sanctuary, find quiet, find peace and find a sense of calm, um, as you move into the future. And I really doubt that this tower is really going to come crashing down because I don't see any other energies here. Um, I see you watching the tower. See how you're watching the tower. I see you guarding the tower, but I don't really see the 10 of swords. I don't see the five of swords. Um, I don't see the seven of swords anymore. I don't see any of those energies. So I doubt that this tower is going to come crashing down. Ultimately, this is about you here in the high priestess energy, um, having this innate wisdom, um, understanding the, the weaknesses within yourself and those hidden desires within yourself um, that perhaps played a role in the past. Uh, maybe it was the desire to please others, the desires to make others happy. Um, it, perhaps it was something like that with the ego, or perhaps it was just... Um, some deeper learning that you were were acquiring during a period of time. But I see you with this wisdom now. I see you with this divine energy. Um, I see you in a very quiet energy. It's very quiet with a high priestess energy. Uh, I think you quietly know that there is a new beginning here for you, a new start. And I think you quietly know that there has to be some sort of ending here. There has to be some sort of alter, alter not altercation, alternative or what's the word that's trying to come out alteration alteration <laughs> that's just mean <laughs> why do they do that um sorry i'm just laughing because it's it's sometimes the words that come out are so similar to other words and they mean the opposite it kind of tricks me i think that but you know what? There is a kind of happiness that I feel. It's like you're shedding a, a coat. You're shedding something here. And it brings a lightness to your energy. And I think that's kind of the energy that I'm in. It comes with this high priestess energy. See the high priestess energy right here, looking over the new, the new world? See how she's looking over and the light that's coming from her now shining in down over this new new wish come true, whatever it is, whatever it is for you. There's a beautiful new start here in some way for this group of people. And the high priestess within you knows. Look how she stands here next to the tower. She knows like this change has to happen. And come what may, there's a new beginning. Come what may, there's a new beginning. I think she's quiet. She's not expressing everything about herself. She's not oversharing. She's not going around talking about it. She's just doing it. She's standing in front of all of her dreams. She doesn't have to tell anyone her dreams, but she's definitely here meshing the yin and the yang. She definitely is. But this is powerful yin that brings forward the most powerful yang. It's just like a mug. 
right? The, the mug, the ceramic clay that builds the mud is the yang, right? And the hole in the mug is the yin. So the mug has no value unless there's a hole in it, right? So there must be, there must be this quiet stillness of the four of swords and the high priestess in order for the new yang to start to build something like that, something like that that's going on here. Some very deep energetic changeover. We do have the hermit energy here, Virgo energy. We have Pisces energy. We have Libra Taurus energy. Could it could be any zodiac signs here. I think this is all about your journey though. This is all about your journey. You're coming back out. See, you have been through something here in the past. You have been through something and it's required you to look deep within. Honestly, it really has because you're coming out here revising. The hermit goes into the cave, having experienced something, having experienced a trauma or a crisis or some kind of um, life experience that has shaken him or her up. And the hermit goes into the cave and really thinks about this, thinks about this, really digs deep, digs deep on this situation, looks at what other people's roles were and what they did, looks at what his or her role was and what he or she did, and really sees the truth in everything. And the hermit is able to alter or revise his or her life path or his or her perspective. The hermit is able to make revisions in perspective based on the hermit's own evaluations, not on what anyone else says, right? Not on what scripture says or what anyone else says, but on his own determination of what feels correct and accurate and right to the hermit. So there is definitely here, um, coming out into the community in a different way. It doesn't have to be loud. None of these energies are loud in this reading. Nobody's talking. <laughs> Nobody's doing anything here that's sharing, oversharing, or shouting out, or, or anything. This is very quiet energy, but it's very masterful. It's very masterful. Here's the Empress here. And the Empress is a very high vibrational internal, internal balance very creative energy, very much connected in with Gaia. Look how we have the world here next to Gaia. It's very much of truth, of creativity, of um, a sounding board for new. Um, it's like a, it's like a diving board. It's a diving board kind of energy. And who better to dive deep than the Empress with these fragments of the Hermit and the High Priestess alive and well within her. So you're doing something here in the next few weeks as you begin something new, like you are really preparing. You have this deep sense of wisdom. You have um, stepping out into the community in a new way. And when you do this, when you step out into the community in a new way with new, um, with a new walk, it doesn't have to be a lot new, but there's definitely something different about you. This is inspiring to others. The hermit is a, is a, is a um, master teacher, whether the hermit is an actual teacher or not, this is someone who teaches with the way that they walk and the way their light shines out for others, the way that they're walking now and the way that they are um, living their life at this point in time is so very inspiring to other people because it talks about truth. It talks about realness. It talks about inspiring thinking and advanced knowledge and, and deep wisdom, and it really begins to teach others. So as you can see, the hermit is not speaking. The hermit is only shining a beautiful light, and that is um, part of your energy as you move into this next future for yourself, Gemini. But we definitely see a new beginning here, and whether you can actually see it in reality or not, the high priestess in you knows that this is how you step into a beautiful new beginning because there had to have been an ending here. And what I see from the ending is it's going to be okay. It's, it's a little bit scary and it might be a little bit worrisome, but I, it looks to me like it's going to be okay because you, you recover from this scare by resting and coming in from the battle. 
and I don't see any other harmful energies here. You might be a little wary and a little worried and you might be watching. You might be defensive, but in the end you're coming in out of this battle and you're able to rest. So you know that there's a beautiful new path ahead of you and you are at this very high vibration within yourself of the Empress. So you have found, found balance um, with the clarity and, and having a, a picture of the of the um, having a having clarity and having a view of the bigger picture, making good decisions for yourself, being discerning in um, the actions that you take, feeling that passion within you that helps propel you forward into taking new action, um, uh, feeling that creative energy from Mother Earth flowing through you, being that caretaker for all that lives, being nourishing and loving um, towards all living beings. This is the balance that you are acquiring as you move into the next incoming energy. So it is a beautiful energy and it is a powerful reward um, for the acknowledgements that you've made, the work that you're doing in this current day. Um, there is a beautiful gift that's coming towards you. And it's because of your ability to um, dig deep into your own life, um, look at your own roles. How have you contributed to the situation? How have others contributed to the situation? And you have found a healthy way of making a revision in your path or in your perspective or in something that you're doing for work or in a love life, something here that you're revising that's bringing in new healing, new empowerment, a beautiful new journey, a beautiful new accomplishment here um, that I see in your future. So really, this is a victory story for Gemini, for Gemini this month. Let's look at the guidance here that's coming forward for Gemini. And after we get done with the guidance, I'm going to take a short break and I'll come back and I'll do the extended. And I'll let you know um, before I go what energies I'm going to be digging deeper in. All right, let's see what the guidance is here is here for you. We have this Five of Pentacles energy. We have Death energy. And we have the Knight of Cups energy. Let me do a little bit more clarifying. Give me more on this Five of Pentacles, please. More on the Five of Pentacles, please. Seven of Wands. Boundaries. Death. Yeah, we have transformation here twice. Please give me more on the Knight of Cups. This energy of love. Energy of love, please. Please tell me more about this Knight of Cups. Queen of Wands. The moon. Could be Pisces energy. Aries, Leo, Sagittarius energy, Ace of Swords. So with the Five of Pentacles, it talks about this overarching feeling of being left out of something, being left out of a society, being left out of wealth, being left out of, a, of a, an opportunity. Um, it's an overarching feeling of getting the rough end of the deal. And it could have been a feeling that has been with you for quite some time. It could actually have been a factual experience that you are living, not just a perspective, but something that actually was part of your um, lesson that you have been going through. Because look, you have the moon here in the same place. So it looks like you have moved out of a period of struggle. Either it's struggle with society or with the community, struggle with money, struggle with finances, you have moved out of a struggle, you have gone through a period of time, and this doesn't have to be a life epic story. This can be something that's at a smaller scale. So um, when I can get when I get in these energies, oftentimes I can be very dramatic. Gemini, please be patient with me. Um, you can take these energies and scale them down to being something more like um, something that you would deal with within a month's period of time, perhaps. But sometimes these stories are meant for a bigger 
are, are a bigger story. So they're just for you to take and to apply to your situations if some of these energies fit. Um, we have the seven of wands here in the death energy. So there, there was a need for you in this, in this situation to, um, learn how to create protection around yourself, learn how to create boundaries. Um, in, in a way there was maybe, um, perhaps a, an overgiving, an overgiving so that the return to you was lacking, um, so that you overgave or you worked so very hard, but you never, um, at the end of the month, you never had any kind of equality in your bank account. There was nothing in your life that would share, show you of all of the work and all of the good intentions that you had for people. And so whatever this was for you, it, it required um, some sort of focus on recreating um, boundaries around um, what you give. So you created boundaries for yourself. You determined for yourself, okay, what is it, what am I willing to give? And what am I no longer willing to give? And what do I require to be given in return? Because for everything that we give, um, we should receive something in return. That is a law, right? That is a law of the universe, that there is always an exchange of energy. And when we ourselves step over that law, when we um, create um, a mess with the boundaries, we can sometimes do it. I mean, I myself in my life in the past have over has overgiven. Um, and I have been in the Five of Pentacles energy quite a lot in my life. And I am no longer in the Five of Pentacles. And it took some hard lessons for me to realize that um, I should not be giving to others in a way that depletes myself. Because my um, focuses in my life um, we're always in the extreme amount of giving. Um, and I was always very poor. I was always tired. I was always depleted. And for all the work I did, um, it always felt, it was a five of pentacles perspective. I have been there in my life. And what it takes is a refiguring of that and a major transformation here um, on how we um, value our time, how we value our skills and our capacities, and how we value ourselves as people, as as beautiful, precious people, each and every one of us. Um, so there has been some sort of transformation, or there is a transformation taking place here on your perspective of what your role is in your own life. What is your role in your life? Is it to serve and to not receive? Is it to it, um, is it to experience a beautiful human um, journey? What is your role? What is your role in this lifetime? And I think these questions that you've been asking and this focus that you've been putting on self, because we do see in your current time period, um, the nine of cups, which talks about um, a focus on self-awareness, a focus on um, self-fulfillment. And that focus has been driving this tra this transformation here that we're seeing. So that you are going through a major change here and how you view the Five of Pentacles, this lack perspective, and you're moving into a very abundant energy, right? It, it's, I mean, you are flying out of this canyon on the arms of a great, beautiful bird. The bird that you're flying out on has never perhaps been a bird that you had any fondness to. It's not a colorful bird. It's not a white bird. It's a bird that has surprised you with its strength and it's a beauty to bring you into a new life. And look at you, you're scarred, you're bloodied. You look different than you ever imagined you would look. Let me see if I can get it here. See if I can get it to focus. Ah, it's kind of hard. There we go. But you're finding your freedom now. This is digging deep into the darkness to find the light. And here we have you living in this love energy now. We have the Queen of Wands, which talks about confidence, value of self. The Queen of Wands energy is an energy of um, understanding what your superpowers are. Each and every one of us has a superpower. Superpowers are not just in the movies. They're in each and every one of us. We all have a special talent. We all have a very special treasure within us. And the Queen of Wands understands what that is. And she works to feed that treasure, to nurture it. And as she does that, the light within her, the flame within her, 
bursts brighter and brighter and she becomes very attractive. Um, she can be very strong in her energy. She also knows her weaknesses and she has um, looked at her weaknesses um, straight in the eye, right? She hasn't turned away from her weaknesses. She hasn't hid her weaknesses from herself. She has learned to manage her weaknesses. And this creates a very strong um, person with very, what am I trying to say? Someone with very strong internal confidence, confidence and self-empowerment within the self. So this is a person that has complete confidence and um, strength within the self. It doesn't matter what's in the pocketbook. It doesn't matter what kind of a home you live in. It doesn't matter the clothes that you wear. This is an internal strength. This is a very attractive energy. So we see you moving into this very confident, very empowered energy. Man or woman does not matter. Um, you're moving forward into the future here with the energy of love, knowing that you don't know what your future holds. There's that moon again, right? You don't know what the future holds, but you're moving forward in an energy of love, right? You're moving forward into an energy of love. And you have the Ace of Swords here, which talks about finding your path, making your decision, seeing the clarity, seeing the big picture, making the decision and moving forward. And the power of clarity and the power of truth. All these elements help you move forward in this energy of love. And there could be an offer of love as well, because we do have the Ace of Swords, which is a communication, possibly for some of you. Not everyone is searching for an offer for love. But for those of you that are, there could be. And I want to dig a little deeper into this energy on love to see if there's anything here about love of a, a romantic love offer. And then we'll dig deeper into this Knight of Cups and the Extended, but I just feel like I want to see what else is here. Knave of Cups, there could be a new, a Page of Cups, there could be a new introduction here as well. This is new inspiration, new introduction, new love, new feeling of warmth in the heart. It's a beautiful energy. So Gemini, I am going to take a break. It's been close to 45 minutes. <laughs> I'm going to take a little break and then I'll come back and do the extended and I will dig deeper into the following energies. I'm going to dig deeper into the Six of Cups and the Nine of Cups. I am going to dig deeper into the, the um, Knight of Cups. But I feel like maybe this new, the, the world energy. So that's what I'm going to focus on in the extended. And then I will also look at the people who are around you and what their intentions are. All right. So that's what I'm doing in the extended reading. Um, my beautiful friends, thank you very much for being here. It is always a pleasure to read for my Gemini crowd. Um, you guys are amazing. And I wish you the most beautiful journey in 2020. Thank you.